To see what happens, let us compare our previous version of A star to our new implementation using the kinematic state space of the vehicle. So, in our previous implementation, we had a raster of cells. So, when we were in one cell, we could explore all the other cells and check if one of those neighbors has to be put into our front. Then the next step, for example, exploring this node, we had a look at that node, but this is visited already. This node, this node, and now these nodes. So these are the only new nodes that are added. So we see that these discrete cells limit the amount of states that are added while we proceed in our search. And so imagine this algorithm runs for a while, starting from our start node towards our goal, then as we have seen, our worst case search space is that of the Dijkstra algorithm. It will look like that. All those nodes will have been visited. So how many nodes are these? So if we need d steps from our start to the goal, then the number of nodes inside this disk is proportional to the area of this disk, which is proportional to d raised to the power of 2. So that's bad, but it's not too bad. And as we know, we can hope for a better shape of the search space so that this number gets smaller, although of course, in general, we will end up with d squared. So now let's have a look at our new algorithm, which operates in the kinematic state space, and it does the following. Starting from the start node, it explores all the alternatives, and then it explores all alternatives for all those alternatives. and it looks pretty much the same as this algorithm. However, what we miss now is this feature that we had earlier, namely that once we have visited a node, we can cross it off. There's no need to visit this node again if we have visited it already. Now here, all our states, they are continuous. They consist of x, y and heading. Now it doesn't make sense to store this x, y heading in a list or another data structure of visited states. Because if we store that state, the chance that we generate this continuous state with exactly the same x, y and heading is basically zero. So again, drawing the larger picture, with our kinematic state space, we start here, where we have only one node, and then we generate three nodes, and then for each of those three nodes, we generate three nodes again. So overall, this is one node, then the next stage, it is already three nodes, in the next stage, it is nine nodes. And since we never visit a state that we generated earlier again, we will carry on like this. So, when our search proceeds for a long way, until it reaches the goal, we will have generated 1 plus 3 plus 9 and so on, plus 3 raised to the power of d, if d is that distance again, which is the so-called geometric sum and is approximately 1.5 times 3 raised to the power of d. So this is the problem in our algorithm. So here we had d raised to the power of 2, which is a growth quadratic in the length of the path. But here we have 3 raised to the power of d, which is exponential in the length of the path. And this will kill us any computer. So imagine you buy a computer which is 3 times as fast as your previous computer. And what you can do with that is you can solve a path that is just one step longer than your previous path. So it grows so fast that we have no chance no matter how fast our computers are. So we need to do something else here. So one way to solve this problem is to introduce a discrete space of possible poses. So just as we did earlier in our A star case where we had this discrete raster and we knew whenever we have marked those nodes as being visited we do not have to add them later on because this flag tells us that this state is already in the set of optimal nodes. And now we do something similar. Here we had only x, y, but now we have a state space of poses x, y and heading. So effectively we're having now a 3D raster where the first two dimensions are x and y at discrete steps and the third dimension is the heading angle also at discrete steps. So for example, we could use unit steps for the raster in x and y and discrete steps, for example, 
in terms of multiples of 10 degrees, where of course the maximum is 350 degrees, so that the space is subdivided into 36 cells. So for example, if we start at this continuous state, which may be 2.4, 1.2 and 10 degrees, we will enter this into our discrete raster cell 2, 1 and 1. And then if we move on from here and we end up in this cell, which is say 5.1, 11.9 and 89.2 degrees, we will enter this into the discrete cell 5, 11 and this divided by 10 degrees and the floor of that, this is 8. And so by marking those cells as being visited, we avoid the case that we later generate from a different position a similar node and this prevents then the rapid growth of our search space. On the other hand, it has to be noted that since in this case we do not generate this solution, our search does probably not return the optimum path anymore. However, as you'll see, it works pretty well. So the only thing we'll have to implement for this to work is a function called postindex, which takes a continuous pose and computes a discrete index consisting of an x index, a y index, and a heading angle index. And using those indices, we have to keep a record of any index that we visit during our search. Now, this brings us to your final programming assignment. Namely, you'll have to modify the PP02A code to arrive at the PP02B car state space A star solution code, which is almost identical to the previous code, but now has to include this discrete collection of states which have been visited already. So it's almost the same up to here. So now here is something I've integrated in addition, and you will see that shortly you will be able to switch on and off in the user interface forwards and backwards movements. So these are exactly the same curvatures, but all of those three additional states do have negative distances, so they drive backwards. So here is this new function, which takes a pose and computes a discrete version of this pose. And for this, it uses some raster size in X and Y and another raster size in heading, which is set to 10 degrees. And so here is the exploration of the search space, which is now called A star, because it is indeed an A star like algorithm, which keeps track of the nodes that were already visited. So all the start is identical to the previous version. And it starts to get interesting here. Here you'll have to do some changes. So at the very moment I pop my next pose from my heap, I will have to compute a discrete version of this pose using the above function. So that's not too hard to do, it's just one line. And then I will check if this discrete version of the pose is in the dictionary of generated states already. And if so, I will skip the rest of the loop. Next, we mark the visited cells, that's identical to the previous solution. And then, since we did not skip above here, we now have to enter our new pose into the dictionary of generated states However, you'll have to change this here, because we do not want to enter the continuous pose here, but rather the discrete version of the pose. And this is all changes there is to do. In particular, there's no change to be done down here. Here, continuous versions of the poses are pushed onto the heap, but that's fine, because all the logic containing the discrete indices is up here and here. Finally, remember when you put together the new code, take this part here as is, because this part is also different from the previous version of the code. So now please go ahead and program this.